show you how Brigantine Golf Links has made its comeback from the devastation. It did, and, and thankfully to the, you know, thanks in large part to the work of my superintendent, Tom Dale. I did a phenomenal job in getting the golf course back in condition. You know, I read where the prevailing winds are from the ocean, which is a lot farther away than the bay, but every once in a while, I guess you do get a west wind and it comes off the, the bay. The body well, language was not encouraging. Yeah, well, I mean, because, you know, he's going through something. Hi again, everybody, and welcome to Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. I'm Harry Donahue, and today I'm at the Brigantine Golf Links in Brigantine, New Jersey, just a stone's throw from Atlantic City. And today, we're going to show you how Brigantine Golf Links has made its comeback from the devastation of Sandy. You know, the city of Brigantine was one of the hardest hit shore municipalities a year and a half ago. And up until last year, things weren't quite back to normal. But now, everything's back to the way it was at Brigantine Golf Links. An historic golf course that began back in 1927 when the likes of Walter Hagen and Harry Varden would come here to prepare for the British Open Championship, an event that Hagen himself won twice, and he owes a lot of it to practicing here at the Brigantine Golf Links. So stay with us. We'll show you what they have in store for the summer season of golf at Brigantine Golf Links on Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management, helping you build, manage, and preserve wealth and by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf. Honey, what are all these cash rewards? Stellar checking with Smart Rewards. We earn cash on check card purchases and when we transfer money from our Stellar checking into our savings account. Cool. How should we spend them? Mm. Stellar. 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 Probably groceries. Stellar checking from Susquehanna Bank. Earn cash rewards whether you're spending or saving. Member FDIC. At this moment, across the country, families are packing their bags for a getaway. And no matter where they end up, they'll all be home by dinner. Plan your own at PlayGolfAmerica.com. From finding fun and affordable programs to finding advice from PGA and LPGA professionals, PlayGolfAmerica.com has a way for you to get away. Visit today for details. PlayGolfAmerica.com, your link to the game. Welcome back to Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. We are at... Brigantine Golf Links with Nathan Robbins, general manager of uh, the Golf Links here at Brigantine. And Nathan, the last time you and I talked, I think the weather was, uh, well, let's put it this way, not as nice as it is today. And uh, tell us a little bit about the recovery effort and what's been going on in a year and a half since Sandy and where we stand today. Well, the, the key, I think, is that uh, we're beyond recovery now. You know, we're back to kind of operating as before, to use the old naval term. Uh, the, the golf course is in fantastic shape. Uh, we've been in fantastic shape for more than a year now. Our rounds are up, our revenues are up, and uh, people are coming back to the shore. So we're excited about a great summer coming up. And you can probably hear in the background, construction. That's not on the golf course, but on a few bayfront homes that are under construction right now. I think that's an indication of how things are getting revitalized and, as you said, back to normal here in Brigantine. No question about it. Uh, the uh, the government monies, FEMA programs, et cetera, they've all really come into play here on the island. And beyond that, we've got some uh, some brand new homes that are going up just on pure speculation by the real estate investors. So it really tells me that the economy is turning around. We've seen it in our own operation with outings that have come back year after year to us. They're coming back with more players than we've seen in the last few years. So all the indicators are that it's going to be a great summer here at the shore. When you look back at Sandy and the damage from debris and salt water, which is always a problem around the golf course, uh, I know you were telling me just about all but one, two greens suffered pretty severe salt water damage from the flooding. They did, and, and thankfully to the, you know, thanks in large part to the work of my superintendent, Tom Dale, 
uh, did a phenomenal job in getting the golf course back in condition. But uh, the golf course is in fantastic shape right now. I've been hearing nothing but rave reviews from not only our regular players, our members, but also our guests are, are coming off the golf course just raving about how good the golf course is. And uh, you really cannot see any indications of, uh, of what Sandy left behind. So we're looking ahead. It's going to be a great summer. You know, and traditionally, this golf course dates back to the late 20s, 1927, I think, is right. when it opened. And traditionally, it's been uh, revered as having some of the finest greens in the South Jersey, Philadelphia area. And that's still the case today. The greens are absolutely fantastic. It, we uh, we did airify them this spring, and, and right before we airified them, which is pretty typical of, uh, of most golf courses, right before you airified them, they were absolutely perfect. So people always wonder why you have to do that, but there are reasons behind it. The course is in fantastic shape. Our greens are awesome. Fairways are, are, uh, are grown in now, and everything looks great here at the Lynx. Let's talk a little bit about the golf course itself. It is a traditional Scottish Lynx style golf course. Very few trees come in to play on the golf course. But what would you say if you had a chance to sum up in, in a few words or more, uh, what is the nature of Brigantine Golf Links? Well, the nature is that it is a golf course that you can play on the ground. Uh, we don't have a lot of forced carries. Uh, there is a, a fair amount of water and uh, water hazards on the golf course, but you don't have, you don't have to carry them. Uh, so it allows you to play the, go the, the holes on the ground, allows you to play the game on the ground, which is very typical of what you'll find over in Scotland and Ireland on their links. So firm and fast is, like we had a tr uh, is how we like to keep it out here, and uh, I think that's what people will find when they come play the links. Stay with us. More with Nathan Robbins here at the Brigantine Golf Links as Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Management, continues in just a moment. Hi everyone, Ron Jaworski here. I just want to let you in on a little secret. Here, just outside of Atlantic City, you'll find some of the top-rated golf courses in the world. Imagine playing these championship courses during the day, then playing your hand at something else at night. Casinos, bars, clubs, shows. Atlantic City has something for all the ways you like to play. So pack your bags for the ultimate golf getaway. Do AC and play AC Golf. AC Golf, where the play continues well into the night. Free enterprise is the engine that drives our economy. Everyday businesses, big and small, work to make life better for their customers and a better life for themselves. Susquehanna knows successful businesses need a strong financial partner, someone who can help keep your business running at peak efficiency. The people of Susquehanna Bank, doing what counts for businesses like yours. Member FDIC. Welcome back to Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. Today, we're at the Brigantine Golf Links with Nathan Robbins, who's the general manager. We talked about the comeback here at Brigantine after Sandy, and now we're going to talk specifically about the golf course. And Nathan, I'm going to put you a little bit on the spot. I want your best par three, best par four, and maybe not best, but favorite par five. Well, I think the best par three on the golf course is probably our 15th hole, which a lot of people would consider our signature hole. From the back tees, it's about 165 yards or so. Uh, there's water in front, there's water on the left, there's water behind. So it really is the peninsula green, and it is not a very big target. So with the prevailing winds that we have down here, it, it always makes for a huge challenge when it comes to the 15th. You know, I read where the prevailing winds are from the ocean, which is a lot farther away than the bay, but every once in a while, I guess you do get a west wind and it comes off the bay waters and probably is just as strong as what you see from coming from the ocean. No question about it. And the, the fun thing about the wind here on Brigantine is on a daily basis, it can change in the middle of the day. So you might have a, a hole that's downwind in the morning and then by the time you get to the, the back nine, the same direction, you might be playing into the wind. So it always keeps you on your toes here at the links. Okay, so we have your favorite par three. How about your favorite par four? Actually, we're standing on it. This is one of my favorite holes right here. Uh, the ninth hole is right behind us. Uh, it's not the longest hole on the golf course. It's about 385 yards or somewhere in that neighborhood, but it usually does play right into the breeze, so it plays a lot, more, uh, a lot longer than the yardage would say. Uh, you can see that there's water on the right-hand side of the landing area, and uh, there's out-of-bounds on the left-hand side. So the, the tee shot is, uh, is a big challenge. And then coming into the screen, well-guarded by three bunkers uh, with some of the better slopes on the, on the golf course. So uh, this is a fantastic hole here on number nine. Yeah, it looks like, too, a little subtle 
uh, undulation in that green that maybe uh, not everybody's aware of until you're standing on top of it. That's exactly right. It, it looks relatively flat, and after you hit your putt, you kind of scratch your head and say, boy, I didn't see that coming. And you mentioned the water on the right off the tee and uh, up the left side. There's not much of a landing area. That's a pretty narrow fairway. That is a very narrow fairway. I unfortunately have found both edges of that fairway and beyond, but uh, every once in a while I sneak one into the short grass. Okay, so that takes care of a three and a four. How about a five? I think uh, number six is probably my favorite par five on the golf course. Uh, it's about 515 yards from the back tees. Uh, you've got a choice off the tee. Do you want to play to the left and play it safe and leave yourself a potentially longer shot into the green? Or do you want to try to cut off a little bit and carry a bunker uh, and give yourself a shot at maybe being able to get home in two? Uh, if you don't hit a good tee shot, there are some cross bunkers about 100 yards short of the green, right where they should be. So well designed by Styles and Van Cleek. And uh, if, you, if you do have to lay up, you have to make a choice whether you want to stay short of those or try to carry them. And then the green again, also a very small target, well guarded by bunkers on the right and, uh, and a swale on the left. So it's a, it's a very challenging hole. Now the se summer season is just getting underway. Here we are Memorial Day weekend. And uh, this is traditionally the, the kickoff point for the summer season, both at the shore and also at shore golf courses. Uh, your rates I think are as competitive as there are here in the South Jersey Atlantic City area. We like to think so. Uh, we think we're very reasonably priced, and uh, as an example, seventy-five dollars during the d during the week, and eighty-five dollars on the weekends here at the golf here at the at the links. Very competitive in the marketplace, and one of our uh, our ongoing specials all summer long will be forty-nine dollars on Super Tuesdays, is what we're calling them. Super yeah. Tuesdays. That's all day long. That's all day long on Tuesdays for forty-nine dollars. Uh, includes your golf cart. So we're looking forward to it. You know, and the other thing about the uh, Brigantine Golf Links is. And it's noted on the website, it is the closest golf course to Atlantic City. So for a lot of people, and people beyond the immediate Philadelphia area that may be watching Inside Golf right now, if they're planning a trip to Atlantic City and they want a place to go to that's literally just minutes away, this is the spot. There's no question about it. We are absolutely the closest golf course to the casinos. Maybe a 15-minute ride uh, from the uh, from the boardwalk right here to the links. So uh, we love to have people come from afar. We just had a, a visitor last week who came from Australia and uh, and came over and played the golf course and really enjoyed himself. So we uh, we love it when people come visit us. Oh, I'm curious. How did the guy from Australia hear about the Brigantine Golf Links? He actually found us on the web, uh, did a uh, did a search, and, and thankfully we uh, were well positioned on Google, I believe. So we. Uh, it wasn't Greg Norman, was it? It wasn't Greg Norman. At least it didn't look like him. So <laughs> You never know. Talk about history. We mentioned earlier about 1927 is when the golf course opened. And there is maybe part myth, but maybe some fact to it also. That some of the greats back then used to come here practicing for, among other things, the British Open Championship, and among them Walter Hagen. And if it's true, he had a lot of success because, what, in 1928 and 29, he won the Open Championship. It certainly must have been a good proving ground because uh, the uh, the like you say the local legend is that both uh, Varden and uh, and Hagen came out here and practiced and obviously the uh, the area was not quite as developed it is, as it is now so the uh, the winds really were the factor as I said before playing on the ground is really what I think they were trying to get into the mode of uh, in preparation for the Open Championship so it's uh, it's kind of a neat bit of history that we have uh, uh, we have those folks who have come out here and played and, and prepared for such an incredible championship. And folks, as they step out of your clubhouse and make their way to the first hole, will notice the signs. One arrow pointing to the Hagen 9 and the other one to the Varden. Now, I assume, is the Hagen 9 the front and the Harry Varden the back? That is correct. Okay. That is exactly correct. I want to get my direction straight. <laughs> Not a problem. We can find the first tee for you. All right, Nathan, one more chance to give you uh, an opportunity to plug your website and let people know exactly how they can get in touch with you and the staff here at the Brigantine Golf Links. Well, they're certainly welcome to, to be old-fashioned, I guess, and call us at 609-266-1388 is the phone number. Uh, obviously, all the information that they need, including the ability to make tee times, et cetera, is available on uh, brigantinegolf.com, and uh, they can go there. They can have any of their questions answered. They can submit questions for the staff, and we will reply within one day uh, to make sure that they, uh, they are able to make the decision to come here to the links. And now that the season is really getting underway, outings, a lot of people, I like say, maybe they're coming down to do something in the Atlantic City area. They want to bring three or four groups. This will be an ideal spot for them. You can accommodate them for golf, and also you have your uh, Lynx Grill for uh, 19th hole activities. Exactly correct. Uh, we do a fair amount of bachelor parties. Uh, we're a, an absolutely perfect spot for that. 
mentioning uh, being as close as we are to the casinos. So for those who are coming down for to have a bachelor party, come on over, play some golf. We've got a full service bar and a full service restaurant uh, that we're more than happy to, to host smaller groups like that. And we can host groups as large as 120 as well. So uh, we're, we're always excited to have folks come out to the links. And something else before we leave, a new logo this year the Brigantine Golf Links with the lighthouse, which uh, kind of ties in the city of Brigantine, which owns the golf course and also the golf course itself. Explain a little bit about uh, who, who decided on this, because I think I know the answer, and uh, how you maybe hope taking uh, Brigantine Golf Links to the next level. Well, we're, we're looking forward to uh, uh, doing everything we can to make the, the links the, the most attractive option for people who are in Atlantic City coming and visiting, as well as the people that live locally in the area. And this is just an alternate logo that, uh, that I actually came up with and, and worked with some graphic designers on. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's been very popular in the golf shop. The members love it. And uh, we've had a lot of really good comments about it. So we're looking forward to, to the future here at the links. Well, the Lighthouse is sort of a landmark here in Brigantine and certainly Brigantine Golf Links is a landmark when it comes to golf on the Eastern Shore. Nathan, always a pleasure. Thanks very much, Harry. Pleasure to be here. That's it with Nathan Robbins, and we'll be back with our teed off panel as Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management, continues in just a moment. Off the table, you mean for the upcoming U.S. Open, at least, and maybe beyond that. In 1916, a small group of dedicated golfers decided to turn their passion into a business and the PGA of America was born. Our plan was to teach golf and to run golf courses, but along the way, we learned we taught something much more valuable than a game, and we built something far more enduring than clubhouses or fairways. So now, after almost 100 years, we've come to realize that what we thought would be a success story has always been and always will be a love story. From the 28,000 dedicated professionals at the PGA of America to the 27 million men, women, and children who share the passion that is our business, thank you. When you step out, make sure you go all in. Because at Valley Forge Casino Resort, we're rolling out the action. And we'll bring it all to the table. So take us for a spin. And go all in for the win. Valley Forge Casino Resort. It's safe, it's chic, and only a shuffle away from the main line. Guests of Teed Off receive gift certificates to any of the eight restaurants at Valley Forge Casino at King of Prussia. At the time you had the operation, you say, I'm not playing for the rest of the year. I'm taking the Welcome back Inside Golf Presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. It's time for our Teed Off panel. And today we're at the Valley Forge Casino Resort right at the Pacific Prime Restaurant. And our panel, well, no real strangers here on our panel today. We have Ken Dunnick, who is the publisher of Jersey Man Magazine, soon to be publisher of Philly Man Magazine later this summer. Correct. Former Philadelphia Eagle and uh, Philadelphia Star. And Ken, always a pleasure. Thank you. Mike Kern joining us after a little bit of an interlude, but Mike's back on the teed off panel. Award-winning golf writer for the Philadelphia Daily News. What I do. And from <laughs> myphillygolf.com, we have Joe Logan back. Good to be here. Good to see you. Gentlemen, this past week, Tiger Woods made an announcement in anticipation of his upcoming tournament next month down at Congressional, but everybody wanted to know about where do you stand, Tiger? What's your status? How's the back? When you're going to come back? And Joe, he really didn't tell us anything, did he? Not only did he not say anything, he didn't look that good doing it. And uh, if I was a betting man, I would, I would be pulling my chips off the table right now. I, off the table, you mean for the upcoming U.S. Open, at least, and maybe beyond that. And beyond that, yeah. I, you know, well, I, he's not playing in the U.S. Open. No, no that's for sure. No uh, way. But uh, I, I don't see him teeing it up this year. I think he committed to something overseas at the end of the season. But a back injury like that. Yeah, yeah. Mike, it didn't sound. It didn't. Like Joe said, the the, the body well, language was not encouraging. Yeah. Well, I mean, because you know he's going through something that's traumatic for him. I mean, it's. The original prognosis, as I understood it, was three, four months or whatever, depending. 
you know, so I didn't rule out necessarily the PGA in August because it is at Valhalla. I know the British Open is also where he's won at Royal Liverpool, so I don't know how that factors in. But I think what he should have done is just say, at the time he had the operation, just say, I'm not playing for the rest of the year. I'm taking the year off. Take me out of the Ryder Cup. Take me out of everything. And then if for some reason he had come back better or whatever, then you say, hey, it, it went better than I thought. But this way, we're going to be asking him every, you know, month or whatever, how you doing? And um, who knows? I mean, it, it's a back thing. It's, it's supposedly it's going to make him better. But right now, you know, he, all he can do is chip and putt and play with his kids. Now, Ken, you're a former professional athlete, uh, albeit in the uh, NFL and also the USFL back in the playing days of the Stars. But you played college basketball and football at Memphis. Uh, as a former athlete, uh, you must be sympathetic toward Woods and you know his recovery. Did you ever go through a, a really serious surgical procedure that kept you sidelined and, and were antsy to get back? Well, I mean, backs are tricky, number one, and back surgeries for sure. Uh, I think Tiger probably has too much ego to just announce that he was not going to be a part of everything because I think he likes the attention. Um, but certainly I, th- I, I sympathize with uh, what he's going through. and. Again, the clock is ticking as far as the majors are concerned. You know, he's not a young guy anymore, and every one you miss is another one that uh, is going to leave him short of 18. So we'll just see how that plays out. And, and he has went through, I mean, we're talking about a guy who's went through some serious knee surgeries. So it's not like we're not talking about a guy, but this year at 38 years old was the year where he was going to play all courses where he had either won or come very close to winning on. And I think, you know, that kind of was in his mind too. And all of a sudden now it's pretty much looking like it isn't going to happen. I mean, we may see him at Valhalla, but, and even if we do see him, I don't know what kind of Tiger we'll see because the Tiger we were seeing before the back surgery wasn't very good. Let's switch gears a little bit. Later this week, the beginning uh, down at Seaview, uh, the resort hotel and in, in the uh, Bay Course specifically of the ShopRite LPGA Classic. It's an annual affair. They have the best members of the LPGA Tour signed up. I think it's like 95 of the top 100 players uh, in the world are going to be down there. And an amazing person, I had a chance to spend a little bit of time with her, is the defending champion, Kari Webb. 40 years old, she's won something like, uh, what, over 40 tournaments worldwide, seven majors, and she's back to defend. And she's not showing any back problems. She's definitely going to be there. You know, (laughs) the thing I like about Kari Webb is, I covered her a lot early in her career, and she was a very reticent public figure. She, she was a reluctant interview. Uh, you know, she just was not comfortable in the spotlight. But as she's gotten older and more mature, I think she has become more mature, and she's a, she's just a, a better public figure now than she was. Yeah, and uh, she's up against now all these young players, well, Mike, including. Twice. Lydia, Lydia Coe. Lydia Co, I, she's Lex. old enough to be Lydia's mother. Uh, don't say that. I don't, I I don't, think, I don't think Kari would like I'm that sorry. if you said that. Can I take that back? You got Lexi Thompson, who, right. and, and I think you have, you got Michelle Wee, either second or first on the money list. We were wondering, and I think you have like six Americans in the top ten, which we were Stacey all saying, Lewis, we were all saying what happened to the Americans. So, yeah, it could be a, a real interesting time down at Atlantic City, and nobody has ever repeated. At in that, that tournament, championship. and Kari said she and would, well, she'd like to be the first. That's a who's who in terms of Well, they've had a lot golf. of good winners. They've yeah, had Either think, one that was a great bear now at Seaview. they've had four or five Hall of Famers, um, Achoa, including her. Annika, you've got. Annika, like three times. Yeah. Um, Betsy King. Kari. Right. Um, I think back in the day. Uh, Julie Inkster. Julie Inkster, Inkster, Inkster won. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if um, if Nancy ever won it or not. I'm, I'm not sure. But, yeah, they've had, like, a lot of Hall of Famers. So. It's a good event for Jersey men to be at to watch – to learn women how to play, play right? Yeah, first of all, the women are a lot longer than you think they are, okay? Because I've had some guys that I've played with that I know can hit it who have played with some touring pros like Ochoa said that Ochoa blew it right by her. The thing about Kari Webb, though, is, you know, she's getting towards the end of her career, probably, and you're more appreciative of it, and you actually embrace the spot a little, a little bit more than when you're younger. So she may be going through some of that now. It's a great event if you have time to get down to the Seaview Resort right there in Abseekin. Right across uh, the bay from Atlantic City, it's the ShopRite LPGA Classic. Guys, thanks a lot. We'll be back with Inside Golf in just a moment. The Valley Forge Casino Resort is the region's only full amenity gaming resort, and it's only seconds from the Pennsylvania Turnpike at King of Prussia. 
It features 600 slots, 50 table games, plus eight restaurants designed to meet all of your dining needs. So put the beautiful Valley Forge Casino Resort on your destination list. For the past year and a half, Inside Golf has had a great partnership with the Valley Forge Casino Resort. Joel Friedman is the Vice President for Player Development. And Joel, tell us a little bit about the culture here and what makes this casino resort different than others in the area. Well, this casino has a very country club feel to it, okay? We have great dining. We have a hotel which is unique in the Philadelphia market between all the other four casinos. We're the only one with a hotel. So we have 500 great hotel rooms to offer. We have two gourmet dining experiences and celebrity chef Tony Clark is our chef here. So I recommend that you come out and try Pacific Prime or Viviano. Uh, we also have a food court on property, which is unique. Most casinos have the buffet style food. We offer a food court here. And what are they gonna find on the, the gaming floor itself? Yeah, we have 600 great slot machines, all new uh, modern games here. We have a great floor, uh, it's very high speed, it's quick. Um, and then we have over 50 exciting table games. Any table game that you're looking for, we offer here at Valley Forge. And the other thing is the convenience factor. If you're coming by car, it's, you can almost walk from the toll plaza of the Valley Forge King of Prussia Interchange. Yeah, it sits in a great location. It's a gem out west of Philadelphia. We sit in King of Prussia. We're just two minutes away from the King of Prussia Mall, which our customers love. We do a lot of shopping experiences for our guests there. Joel, thanks a lot. Valley Forge Casino Resort, we're rolling out the action. So take us for a spin. For the win. Valley Forge Casino Resort, it's safe, it's chic, and only a shuffle away from the main line. At this moment, across the country, families are packing their bags for a getaway. And no matter where they end up, they'll all be home by dinner. Plan your own at PlayGolfAmerica.com. From finding fun and affordable programs to finding advice from PGA and LPGA professionals, PlayGolfAmerica.com has a way for you to get away. Visit today for details. PlayGolfAmerica.com, your link to the game. Honey, what are all these cash rewards? Stellar checking with Smart Rewards. We earn cash on check card purchases and when we transfer money from our Stellar checking into our savings account. Cool. How should we spend them? Mm. Stellar. 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 Probably groceries. <sighs> Stellar checking from Susquehanna Bank. Earn cash rewards whether you're spending or saving. Member FDIC. Well, that's going to do it for this week's edition of Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. Hope you enjoyed our revisit here to the Brigantine Golf Links, where the summer season is well underway. And don't forget, how about that Super Tuesday offer? $49. That includes golf and cart here at Brigantine Golf Links. And like Nathan said, hey, you can come out here and play the same course at Varden and Walter Hagen prepared for the British Open on, and you may not win a British Open, but you're guaranteed to have a wonderful time. Thanks for joining us, I'm Harry Donahue, and remember, no matter how bad it's going for you out there, don't pick up. See you next time on Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management, helping you build, manage, and preserve wealth and by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf.